Hi guys, welcome to Trumpet Tip Tuesday. This week we have Bert Truax, former second trumpet with the Dallas Symphony Orchestra and founder of the Truax School of Trumpet. So today we're talking about stamp. Um, today we see a bunch of students just going without knowing what they're doing and not thinking. Exactly. So before we get into um, the stamp method, um, Bert studied with stamp in the 70s, so I just want to see if you have any stories. Uh, yes, I do. I um, <laughs> went to the Music Academy of the West, and Tom Stevens was the teacher there, and he would not talk about trumpet fundamentals. He said, I'm going to send you down to see James Stamp. So the Music Academy is in Santa Barbara. So I drove down one day to L.A. to take my first lesson with James Stamp. Uh, it's fair to say that it changed my life. Uh, he has a way, as really good teachers do, of making complex things very simple. And my very first lesson I had with him, he let me stay most of the afternoon. So I had my lesson. And then these guys showed up, and I didn't know who they were. Unbeknownst to me, one of them was Malcolm McNabb. And we played stamp in unison, there were four of us, and it sounded like one big trumpet, like Arnold Schwarzenegger playing trumpet. It was amazing. And uh, after that, uh, I grew up in San Francisco, and I went to the Curtis Institute of Music for school. When I came back home for vacation and holidays, I would drive down to Los Angeles and take lessons with Jimmy. So it was basically about a four-year um, lesson plan that I worked with him during that time. Great. So um, first, let's go page one. Uh, Bert showed me his stamp book, and this is it right now. It's kind of like most people's Arvin's book where it's falling uh, apart because of the binding, but this is a thin book. It should stay together, but it's, as you can see, there's, I said it was coffee, Bert said it was something else. Blood. <laughs> All the practicing. Um, so yeah, page one. What, what do uh, students and teachers need to know about page one? Okay, first of all, the stamp method, when I studied with him, he had mimeographed sheets of his lesson plans and after I studied with him he went over to Switzerland um, at the request of Tom Stevens and uh, had the Swiss publication um, which is Beam publish his work. There are things that I call lost in translation. One of the most important things that I think you should know is that in the beginning of the book the mark that goes like this, it says this mark should not be misunderstood. There's no direction that the slur is going. That is really incorrect because if you've ever worked with a tuner and try to make that needle go right there, you don't play trumpet like that. And that's not how you do stamp. He talked to me about air and that special little point meant lock and blow and there is a direction it's not up or down it's forward and most players that try to work with stamp don't get it because they don't understand the fact that locking and blowing minimizes the movement of your register to make you more efficient so therefore you're not working as hard and your career lasts a lot longer. Great, um, so can you demonstrate um, page one? Oh, <laughs> can you demonstrate? Excuse me, my little doggy is taking everything that Daniel owns. Oh uh, no. Okay, so here's what most people do. Pretty good to me. 
Thank you. <laughs> I practiced all year for you, just for you. Um, you can hear the tendencies of what I did. Okay? I did not lock on the upper neighbor note and I blew down or softer I should say going in the lower register. Now one of the things that he talked about was that there is no again direction and that is correct of which way the slur is going but it's always forward. So if you're playing forward instead of down or up Here's what this sounds like. Full, rich, and vibrant with a minimum of motion in your chops. The less motion you use in your chops, the more endurance you have because you're using the air. And the one thing that the book does not talk about which he worked with me on, is the fact that air is the key. Lock and blow. Right. So for um, teachers, starting off the students with a stamp method, um, in addition to what you just said, what should um, uh, teachers keep in mind for the students? This. I use the fist. Most of my students are black and blue because I do this to all of them to make sure that the energy is consistent. One of the things that Gary Radke of GR Mouthpieces uh, says in his uh, theories of brass playing, which is absolutely true, is that you need a constant supply of uninterrupted air that is supported. And that really is the key. Because without that, stamp is just like any other exercise you blow through that doesn't do you any good. I tell my students that I can get done in 15 minutes what it takes them about 45, and it's not bragging, it's because I understand the theory and I go directly to what it takes to make it work, which is lock your corners and blow. And one of the exercises that I teach my students, and I'd like the teachers to learn to teach their students before they even do the stamp, is to practice lock and blow, which is taking your fingers about this far apart, put them on your teeth, and then bring your top and bottom lip together. That creates the musculature that you need. Then, which is lock and blow, then go to the stamp and everything stays where it needs to be. Full, rich, and vibrant, no matter what register you're playing. And if any of you have heard Malcolm McNabb playing, he grew up studying with Stan. He's the best example I can say. No matter what he plays, it all sounds full, rich, and vibrant. Yeah, and it's important to, to know that when we do this, at the lock and blow with the fingers, that it's balanced all the way around, not so much one way and, and this exactly. way. Exactly. So it's balanced all around, not this way or this way, but all around. Even yes, and the balancing makes the efficiency happen. And the one thing I like about the stamp method, if you do it correctly, I call it an organic method because no matter what inefficiencies you have in your own personal playing, if you approach this the right way, it will correct those. I am not a believer in embouchure changes. It scares me to death. Um, I prefer to try to do it, well, as I call it, organically with stamp. Doing the proper procedures, the proper musculature, and air support the constant supply of uninterrupted air that is supported. And I've been teaching, oh my gosh, for 50 years almost, and I can tell you that 90% of the problems that I see in my students is that they do not have a uninterrupted supported air supply. So what happens? You force.
push. Now, when you're young, that's okay because you've got chops and you can push all you want. <laughs> but when you get to be my age and you still want a career, you got to figure out how the heck to do it, especially if problems occur. And if you're young, you probably haven't had many, but if you're my age, you've had quite a few. So you got to work it out. And I have found the stamp method to be the absolute best way to overcome any difficulties. Great. Thanks for being on the show. Um, so Bert is, oh, hey. <laughs> uh, Bert has a camp in Dallas every summer. I've attended six times when I was in high school, middle school, and now I'm, um, I help out during the summers and it's a great time. We've had so many great artists. Um, so can you tell us a little about who we've had in the past and who are we going to have this summer? Well, first of all, I want to say that I'm so proud of Daniel because he was a student of mine, uh, attended the camp, and last year he was on the faculty, which gives me so much pride. Um, it oh, makes, my makes everything <laughs> worthwhile because that's why we do it, is to make the growth happen for young trumpet players so they can achieve whatever they want to achieve. Uh, we've had Phil Smith, we've had David Bilger, we've had Bob Sullivan, uh, we still have our, I quote, regulars, Marvin Stamp, who is absolutely a jazz legend in my mind, uh, John Lewis, who, if you don't know the name, you've certainly heard him in movies, he was principal trumpet in the last couple Star Wars movies, he's now the number one call trumpet player for recording studios in LA. Um, and Rex Richardson, who is marvelous. Uh, he can play jazz, can play classical. The bottom line with all these incredible artists is that they come for the students. And they love to share what they know. And I see such a difference from beginning of the week to the end with these students when they get exposed to these great players. In fact, I do too. At the end of the week, I go home and practice. So there you go. Yeah, it's great. We do these daily warm-ups um, in the morning to start off the camp. And you could see from day one the difference between the first day and the last day just from the warm-ups. Absolutely. Um, so if you're interested in the camp, you can go to the new website, True Axe Trumpets. At yahoo.com, yes. That's the email for the website. <laughs> oh, well, yes. Either one, either one will get you there. It's okay. <laughs> www.trueaxtrumpets.com. I'll put a link down below. Um, so hope to see you guys there and hope you guys teach your students stamp the right way. Okay. Daniel, thank you. It's been oh, a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good luck in Europe. <laughs> thank you. See you guys next week.